Living Faith International Church welcomes you to Higher Life Broadcast with Bishop Dominic New Love Alote, the head pastor of Living Faith International Church. Bishop Dominic is a dynamic preacher and teacher with an extraordinary depth of knowledge and understanding of God's Word. His vision is to empower each and every believer to live a victorious life through Jesus Christ to actualize their potential and tap into their God-given talents for the purpose of edifying their own life and glorifying God's kingdom. Get ready to be blessed and inspired with the unadulterated word of God. And now, Bishop Dominic Newlove Alote. The condition of a man's heart. Amen. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 1. The Bible says, The preparation of the heart of man and the, as the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. The Amplified says the plans of the mind and orderly thinking belongs to man. But from the Lord comes the wise answer of the tongue. That's the heart. Amen. The preparation and the man. You order your life by the way your heart works and by the way your mind also works. Say amen. Psalm 19 verse 14. Let, thy, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Let's all stand together and let's read this together. Let's all stand together. Let's read it together. Let's go one go. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable. Let's say it again. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Say amen. Now take your seat. Take your seat. So, so the Bible says, let the, let the West, this David, and we're going to find out that outside Jesus, nobody understood the, 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 the way the heart of man. When we talk about the heart of man, we are not talking about your part that pumps the blood. It's not the part that pumps the blood. When we talk about the heart of man, we are talking about the spirit of man. Man is a spirit. Man has a soul. Man lives in a body. Your body, your spirit, your, your, your soul comprises of your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, and your imagination. Your body is just a place where your spirit stays. Your soul is part of your spirit. Can I have amen? Can I have amen? Now, David said, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my spirit, in other words. So, if I am pondering on one thing, and God is expecting something else from me, it means that whatever my heart is pondering on is not acceptable. And when God doesn't accept what is at work in my heart, God cannot help me. I, I, people have been asking me a lot of people a lot especially young people have been asking me daddy what is the secret behind your life what is the secret behind the success of your life your ministry what has kept you going for 40 years preaching the gospel unabated and I keep on telling everybody it is the heart of man and I'm going to share with you this night a few things that has anchored my life Life is not, I say it all the time, if God just blesses people because they, they pray a lot, which is very important, a lot of people in Ghana will be millionaires. You see, but God deals with the heart of a man. The condition of your heart is very important because you can be, you can be thinking one thing and be doing something else. You understand? You can be doing one thing but your heart is something else. And God looks at your heart condition. God prospers you because of your heart, not because of um, uh, what you do. I mean, God is not uh, trying to find the, the right way. He's not so much interested of what you are doing than the, the, the reason behind what you are doing. And the reason behind what you are doing is in the heart. That nobody can see for example if 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 i give you my ipad right now i say oh come and take my ipad and i give you right now to you 
it is a good, a good gesture. And you thank me and you clap your hands. But I can have another motive behind why I'm giving you the iPad that you don't know. And sometimes if you know the motive why I'm giving you the iPad, you even take the iPad. You understand? But the heart, what is in the heart is hidden from man. And that is what makes people very dangerous. What makes people dangerous? Because what is in man is hidden from man. And you can sit in church for a long time and your heart will never change. The changing of a man's life is in the heart. It's not in what you see. I, 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 I thank God for what you are saying, but it's what you are saying based on what is in your heart. You know what the Bible says? We read this scripture all the time, but we don't understand. It said, it said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he see. Okay, let's look at that scripture. Proverbs 23, verse 7. Proverbs 23, verse 6. Let's go, one go. Let's all read together. Eat not the bread of him that have what? An evil eye. Neither desire his dainties. Who is who is a man with an evil eye? Who is a woman with an evil eye? A woman or a man is an evil eye. Is a man who is full of jealousy. A man who is full of envy. And witchcraft is connected to evil eyes. An evil eye can be releasing spells without you knowing that they are releasing spells and curses. Tonight, lift up your right hand. Any spell and any curse that will be aimed towards you and your house. Come on here. Come on here. We condemn it in Jesus' name. I said we shoot it down in Jesus' name. Come on, lift up your voice and shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Evil eyes. The eye of envy, the eye of jealousy, the eye, I, I mean, competitive spirit. Trying to become something you are not. Fighting for something you are not. So, the writer of Hebrews said, Eat not the bread of him that have evil eye, neither desire his dainty meat. How do you even know that this person have an evil eye? How do you know? Let's go to the next verse, verse 7 and, and 8. Let's read it together. So, who you are is the way you think in your heart. Okay? The ponderings and the meditations of your heart. The sad thing is that I know what you are saying, but I don't know who you are in the heart. That's the sad thing. A human being doesn't know what another human being is saying. See, that is why most of us are hurt. That's why most of us are betrayed. That's how most of us cry. Because some of us, we gave our heart to some people. You trusted people that you shouldn't trust. And at the end of the day, you were bruised and wounded. Many people have never recovered from the kind of trouble they went through because of the way they trusted people. Okay? So, who you are, who you are is not what you say. Hear me. Who you are is not what you say. Who you are is what you think in your heart. Let me say it again. Who you are is not what you say. Jesus said to Judas, he said, are you betraying me with a kiss? You know that scripture? You are betraying me with a kiss. A kiss is supposed to be for lovers. A kiss is supposed to be for lovers. But here are you. You are betraying me with a kiss for me to be killed. And Jesus was betrayed and hung on the cross because a lover betrayed him from the heart. And he moved around them 
and he was and he was doing all these things and nobody knew it was only Jesus that knew what was in his heart so when he said one of you will betray me everybody said who is it and the Bible says that he said the one that I will put the, the dip and put in his mouth shall betray me the Bible, the Bible tells us that he did that to Judas and they still did not understand because nobody believed that Judas could do that may you never become a Judas I'm not here I say may you never become a Judas and so the heart is very important you need to live your life by your heart your heart condition now let's keep on reading he said his, he said for he as he thinking is in his heart so he see eat and drink said he but his heart is not with you can you imagine when somebody let, let's say let's say Gideon you come to my house and I invite you to come and eat you know and you are at my table and you are eating and in my heart I wish that you you, you would have even dead are you understanding me are you getting me eat oh eat eat you know people have been poisoned people have been poisoned because of this scripture they saw that the person loved them you know I've watched some of these movies where the girl turned away and when the girl turned away the, the best friend put poison in the food in the drink but somebody standing somewhere saw the action and came and took the, the, the drink and when the guy the lady was the, the man was telling the lady the, the, the lady almost slapped him because he said how can you do how, this is my best friend how can you do how can my best friend do this so he said you don't believe me he said no my friend will never do that so he said this is your drink he said take it and drink then the friend will not drink it he said drink and the friend said drink it's, it's, it's your drink drink it then that's where the friend knew that the two of them that have been as a matter of fact the friend was staying with her what was the problem later the friend said because every good thing comes to you you are favored too much people love you too much so so and so too much and I mean I'm angry I just want to remove you from the earth didn't even think that what he, she was doing can even take her into jail can I have a man let's read this scripture very quickly Psalm 11 verse 2 Psalm 7 verse 10 let's read this it said for lo the wicked burned his bow they make ready their arrow upon the string that they may privately shoot at the upright in heart Okay, that so the 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 wicked plots and plans from the heart, and their plan is to shoot at the righteous. Say amen. Give me the next verse. He said, if the foundations be destroyed, that is your your life, you know, you have never built a good solid foundation from the beginning. Okay, and most people sit in church for years and they never build their life. They never build their life. Say amen. Psalm 36, Psalm 7, verse 10. My defense is of God that saved the upright in heart. So when you are upright, God will save you. Oh, I'm not here. I said, when you are upright, God will save you. So you have to make sure that you are right in your heart. This is the secret of success. One of the secret things that you are, me, I tell people all the time, if God doesn't give it to me, I don't like it. I don't like anything God doesn't give. And I refuse to fight for anything that God has not given me. My heart is very important. I am not in competition with anybody in Accra. Neither am I in competition with anybody in New York. I am thankful. I never even believe that I can come this far. I never believed. Come on here, somebody. I'm just thankful. Where myself and Moses and Eugene we were coming, they were bringing me to the airport. And then we went to this place where, you know, they took my bags. You know, they wouldn't even weigh the bags to find out how much the bags weigh. They just took my bags. Eugene said, My, my, my. I said, Eugene, 
I said, I said, I didn't even expect that one day I'll be able to just even sit in the plane and travel. I said, look at me where we are. I said, I'm just grateful. I am not fighting with anybody. I'm not looking for what anybody. I'm just thank God for what God has done for me. Come on, come on, put your hands together. Yeah. If you start developing that kind of that kind of attitude, you're going to have a, a good heart. And you're going to have a right heart all the time. And I'm, I'm saying this because even among pastors in town, among leaders, bishops, one of the problems we have in Ghana is that people are behind the puppy preaching the word with a corrupt heart. Corrupt heart. And it's easy because you can be saying one thing with a different heart. Amen. Psalm 36 verse 10. Let's get this going. The reason why you have to fix your heart on the word of God. The word of God must cleanse your heart and fix your heart. Okay. Verse 10 to 12. Oh, continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. So God, the, the David is praying and said, let your loving kindness and your favor eh, be upon them. Continue those things unto them that have up, are upright in heart. So if you want God to keep favoring you, you have to keep an upright heart. <laughs> Say amen. He said, let not the foot of pride come against me. And let not the hand of the wicked remove me. There are the workers of iniquity falling. They are cast down and they shall not be able to rise. When you develop a wicked heart, when you develop a corrupt heart, I, you are guaranteed to fall. It's a guarantee. It will, it will end you well. It will end you well. If you try to take what doesn't belong to you and fight for it you may get it but guess what you're going to suffer later on and and the the ending of a man's life is better than the beginning i want to end well how many people want to end well yeah i want to end well can i have amen okay acts chapter number 15 verse 8 let's go 15 verse 8 acts chapter 15 verse 8 and God with knoweth the hearts bear them witness giving them the Holy Ghost even as he did unto us God who does what knoweth the heart gave them bear witness with their heart it is your heart that bears with the spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God God doesn't bear witness with what you are saying. God doesn't bear witness with what you are doing. God bears witness with what is in your heart. Are you, are you understanding me? If and when God decides to bless you, he blesses you not because of what you are doing or what you are saying, but because of what is in your heart. That one, only God knows. The Bible says he knows the heart. I don't know man's heart. If, if, I, if I knew man's heart, a lot of mistakes I've done, I wouldn't have done it. Do you know men's heart? A lot of women has been hurt. Because in the beginning, they trusted in a man who said one thing but did something else. Some of these women have even died out of depression. Am I talking to somebody here? Are you hearing me? Depression has killed them. Because they trusted in a man who couldn't be trusted. One lie on top of another lie on top of another lie on top. At the end of the day, they are all their future and everything was messed up. Because they, some, some women have not been even able to have the boldness to accept any man into their life because of their past experiences. Why? Because they are yet to overcome the damage they have. Damage is not in the body. Damage, emotional damage is more terrible than physical damage. God knoweth our heart. First Thessalonians chapter 2. 
verse 4. Are you with me tonight? Number one, God knows the heart. God deals with the heart. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God who which tried our heart. One of the most dangerous things you try to live your life by is trying to please other people. Me, I don't please anybody. No, me, I won't. I don't. I don't. Listen, I don't live to please anybody. So if it is green, I'll tell you it's green. If it is blue, I'll tell you it's blue. A -a Amen. Amen. I, I, I was just saying to some people earlier today. I said, in the kingdom of God, nobody is indispensable. Nobody. Nobody. And I will never compromise my integrity and my principles to keep you with me. I will never do that. Because if I compromise my principles and my integrity to keep you by me, soon you will damage my life and I will never be able to get up. We are talking about a situation in the house today. These people came to make some payments to me. And we are talking about this situation where the, the monies we gave to this person to even go and make payment for the job the people were doing there, he took the money. He took the money. So I have to now find another money to go and pay. Corruption. Corruption. It's too much corruption in church. Not as pleasing men, but God who tryeth the heart. God tries our heart. God judges. God doesn't, we're going to find out. God doesn't judge your actions. He judges your heart. Me, I, I don't know your, okay, let, let's, 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 let's go to somewhere. Let's go to somewhere. First Samuel chapter 16. Let's start from verse 6. And it came to pass, when they were come, that he looked at Eliab. This is Samuel sent by God to go and anoint a priest, a, a king in the house of Jesse. The Bible says that he went there, he had the horn of oil, and then they came one by one, seven sons. The first one that came was Eliab, and he said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Uh, so, so when he looked at Eliab, he said, oh, this man is anointed. Can you imagine how even a prophet of God can be deceived? A prophet. A prophet of such a higher caliber, like Samuel, the Bible says that God did not allow his words to fall to the ground. Even him was going to be deceived. He was going to anoint the wrong person by the physical attribute of the person. Are, are you with me? Come on, are you here with me? So the Bible said, he said it, verse 7. And then, but the Lord said to him, look not on the countenance or on the height of the stature because I have refused him. Don't look at the, the way the person is, the complexion of the person, the how beautiful she or he is on the outside, how he ties his hair, how he does this. No, don't, don't look at that. And don't look at how tall. Oh my God. If God is to choose people by their physical stature, me, I will not be chosen. I will not be chosen. A lot of, a lot of women, Lord, give me a man who is very tall. <laughs> a macho man. Some, a ma you are looking for a macho man. Okay. <laughs> Instead of praying and say, Lord, give me a God-fiery man. Whether he's tall or short, I will take it. God fiery man, a provider, somebody who can take care of me and my children and love me. You are looking for a tall man. And most of us are not married because you look at the person. You look at the person who is saying, I want to marry you. The person is so fat, is so big. But but the person is a provider. The person loves God. The person can take care of you. Am I talking to somebody here? It's far better than to go for somebody who is very tall. Am I talking to somebody here? Am, am I talking to somebody here who is very handsome and yet he's a thief? Yeah. Corruption. Very, very important. Okay? 
then, then this is what he said. He said, because I have refused him. I have refused him. In other words, the one you have accepted because of physical attribute, I have refused him. You chose somebody who is handsome, but I have refused him. You chose somebody who is very educated, but I have refused him. You chose somebody who is very eloquent, but I have refused him. You chose somebody who has a status in society, but I have refused him. So God, what is your standard? What standard are you using? Because if you are choosing all these people, I mean, if you are rejecting all these people with beautiful attribute, as a matter of fact, there is no woman here at the sound of my voice that will, you have two men standing before you. One of them is very rich man, you know, possibly a politician who is in the NDC or MPP who has a lot of contracts coming, making money, has a big house, has about 10 cars in the garage and is not married. Then another poor guy comes who has nothing. Nothing. I mean, nothing. He doesn't even have a bicycle and is staying in some corner. My God, my God, my God. This one doesn't need prayer. <laughs> this one doesn't need prayer. Lord, let me take this one. I, I know you can repair him. You just repair him. You can, you can repair him and make him better. I will pray that you repair him. Let me take this one because this one, with, with, um, uh, uh, all my headache is gone forever. Am I talking to somebody here? But lo and behold, you took that man and that man became a snare in your life. And that man destroyed your life. But what you didn't know, that the one that is being refused and rejected tomorrow is going to be the head. Out of him shall come Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. Yeah. The secret, the secret of life I'm teaching you tonight. If you understand what I'm teaching you, let me tell you something. You will never panic. I prefer to have God with me and be poor than to have a rich man with me or a rich woman with me eh, and be corrupt. You see, when people say, oh, you can't trust church people, you can't trust church people. Don't, 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 don't put your money to church people. This is the reason, corruption of the heart. Because we believe that once you keep on coming to church, you are, you are, you are, you are a good person. It's a lie. Because church doesn't change people. The Holy Spirit changes people when the people yield to the Holy Spirit. So if you don't yield, let me say it, church doesn't change people. It's people that decide to change when they yield to the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. So if you don't yield to the Spirit of God and the Word of God, you can sit here for 40 years and you'll be corrupt. Change is a choice. I choose to change. You can't force me to change. God can never force me to change. The Holy Spirit will never keep me to change. It's a change I decide in me. So, I want to, uh, I can speak in tongues and be corrupt. Amen. Let's finish the scripture. Let's finish with the scripture. Let's go. Okay, then he said, For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Huh? For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Man looks on the outward, man sees what is out. Man, that's that's why we get hurt all the time. Because you are deceived by what what the person is, the the, uh, the physical conditions of the person. Okay, uh, that's what we see. Ma, 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 that's what we see. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Higher Life Broadcast with Bishop Dominic Newlove Alute, the head pastor of Living Faith International Church, one church in two locations, New York and Accra. We believe you have been blessed, inspired, and encouraged. You are invited to worship with us on Wednesdays, Success in Life Teaching Service, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., and Sundays, Celebration Service, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Locate Living Faith International Church, Rima House, 
at Ashalibuche Old Town Last Stop. For more details or prayer and counseling, please contact 0501-550-756-0561-291-565 and 0244-780-205. Remain under the blessings of God. Living Faith International Church. Living by faith. Dominating your world. Thank you.